Hello from the Tegernsee. We are in Bavaria and this is the third last day of our trip. And because Daniel and Max are leaving tomorrow. So sad. Yeah, I, actually we are quite happy. <laughs> uh, we decided that we do one last video with them because uh, good things all come in threes. Many of you requested this one. Um, it's going to be about equipment and what they use um, to take their photos. And we are at this wonderful place uh, here in, uh, in Gmund. Um, and our host is uh, Thomas. He's uh, a famous chef here in Bavaria. And we did a video with him. You will find the link in the video, uh, in the info box. Um, and yeah, tell me, tell me what you use. Tell the audience what you use. Um, it's not much but it, you're the creative guys and you can make wonderful things with almost nothing. Yeah, first we have to say actually that's not all about the camera or the gear because the best camera is always what you have in your hand. And just get into your camera and make the most out of it. That's, that's the most simple idea actually. But we also shoot on camera obviously. Um, I'm personally using the 5D Mark III. It's a pretty old lady already so I'm gonna you have to look at this it. look at this this is this has been everywhere <laughs> it's amazing yeah. but I'm gonna switch it to the um, mark 4 tomorrow I'm looking forward to that already um, I'm using Sigma lenses mostly I have the 35 millimeter 1.4 which is my favorite lens for um, portraits and for I don't know when I just travel around because this is <coughs> I don't know, you, you kind of, um, you have boundaries, but you get creative in these boundaries because you cannot zoom in, you cannot, um, you ha don't have a wide angle, you just have this fixed lens and it, it makes you more creative because you have to walk back or you have to go closer. Um, that's why this is my favorite lens. I, when I don't want to go closer, I have this little one here. This is the 7200 2.8, uh, also from Sigma. Um, yeah, obviously a bit big and really heavy to travel with, but it, I just like it so much. That's why I'm, I bring it. And this big guy is new 1224. <laughs> he's a he's a professional, you know. <laughs> Luckily, you made your insurance today. Right. Yeah. An insurance. This is not in fisheye, but it's close to a fisheye. It's a 1224, um, four. So that's what I'm shooting the um, indoor shots with. Because when you take photos of the car inside, it's just super wide angle, and you just you get him, the back seat, and the trunk in the picture, basically. It's That's a really good lens. We yeah. also use this for filming. Um, if you, um, we decided that we only do um, the equipment of those two. If you want to know what we are using for filming all these wonderful videos, um, let us know in the comments because um, the equipment looks a little bit different. Um, the lenses are a little bit different. Um, yeah, but what do you have, Daniel? My camera is the 5D Mark IV, and I got it since it's been released. And I love the camera. It's by far my favorite tool. I own the Mark II and Mark III, but this one is really a workhorse. It, it never lets me down. And my to-go lens is a 24-70 2.8. Gives me the most flexibility in all kinds of shoots. And I can go on a job with it, and I don't know what will happen or where I'm going to, but I know that I have the right lens for it. For wide-angle things, I'm using the Sigma 20mm 1.4 also for stars and like shots at night or when it gets darker indoors for example it's a really good lens and um, 
last but not least, I got my Mavic Pro for aerial footage, but I just got it a week ago, so I'm still training and trying to figure out the drone shots. What's really interesting about the drone is, and we've talked about this on the on the trip for the last week, is that um, as soon as you, you you have a drone, you you stop moving around as much as you as you did before, because yeah. um, a drone makes you lazy. You know, you you just you just put the you just put the fl the drone up. And you basically fly the drone wherever you want to be instead of hiking up um, a hill um, or going the 100 meters or 200 that's meters. That's why you yeah. will never become a German mm. roller. Yeah, but that's... Uh, <laughs> you're using it, I'm not using that's it right. for taking pictures. So. <laughs> but it can't Maybe replace a proper camera. Absolutely, it, it cannot replace the... Um, the I mean, we've, we've been using the Phantom 4 Pro for filming and um, you guys have been using the, the Mavic. Um, for taking pictures and um, there's, there's of course there's a difference uh, in the image quality um, but the point I just want to make is that um, that a camera still can't be um, substituted by by a drone yeah um, because the, the image quality of course is, is um, a lot different and a lot better with yeah. the, with a normal camera what I don't like about the drone is that you got this fixed uh, focal length. It looks like a wide angle and sometimes you wish you could go like on a 50 or 35 on the drone so that it looks more normal instead of like a fish eye. Obviously, shooting in RAW. Um, what happens then? You're, you're working with Photoshop. You're working with Lightroom. What tools are you using? I think we both are into um, Lightroom because it's just a, the fastest tool to work with. You just insert the, the SD card, you transfer the pictures, and you already have your presets. Uh, you can buy them. You can set them by yourself, and it's just the fastest way to proceed your pictures to edit them and it's quite yeah. simple actually. I think Lightroom is also the easiest way to edit. I I worked years with Adobe Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw and that was such a struggle. And then some guys convinced me to switch to Lightroom and it's boosted my workflow so much. So you, you're only working with Lightroom, right? Right you're, now, yeah. yeah and you're maybe exporting. Photoshop for just some retouch yeah. things uh, when you have to stamp Lot. But then you're exporting, you're transferring them to your iPhone and the, or your phone, yeah, basically, exactly. um, and then you're you're uploading them to Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your wor your workflow is a little bit different, right? You're not only using Lightroom. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't made the step to Lightroom only. I s I'm still this um, mobile editor. I don't know. I just the final retouch uh, um, I'm doing on a, on a phone. Um, because it's, I don't know, it, it's still in, in inside myself, and I, I cannot get over it. But of course, it's it's difficult when a client wants to buy a picture, and he wants to buy exactly this picture, and I cannot provide it because I was editing it with the phone. But there are some good apps, also Lightroom Mobile, so you can um, you don't lose any um, quality of the picture, and it syncs um, your phone pictures with the pictures on your um, desktop. So you have them at the same time, you can edit a live 
all the time. What is, what is the reason for you doing this on the phone? Is it simply because you like editing on a phone or is it, what is the reason? I think I like editing on the phone and pictures look different um, when you see them on a small screen and when you see them on a big screen. When I see them on my Lightroom, just normally when I work at home, they look, they look good. And then I look at them on the phone, and they look different. There's something missing, or there's my Instagram touch missing, I don't know. And then I just um, open Lightroom Mobile or um, another app, and I put a little filter on it, or I just <laughs> use a selective tool to screw it a little bit. Okay. But that's a good idea, actually, because all the people who look at your photos see it on a mobile phone. So if it looks good on your phone, it will look good on their phone. But obviously the disadvantage is if a client wants to buy the phone in full res, you can't deliver it because when you export it on an app, the quality is like... That's what I'm yeah. used to, to, to edit on the phone still. Because that's where I'm coming from, obviously. I didn't start with the camera. How are you exporting uh, the pictures? How big are they when you export them? Do you have like, do you, do you export them in like two megabytes or how big are the files that you're exporting? They're usually way too big. <laughs> because I never know the, the perfect resolution. The, the actual web resolution is uh, 72 um, dpi, that's per yeah. inch. Um, but I still export them much bigger. For some reason, I don't know. So just teach me yeah, I'm how to do that. them in 2000 pixels the longest side and 72 dpi or ppi. That's what works best for me, and I haven't seen any issue about the quality on my photos yet on well, Instagram. Maybe in my case because I edit it yeah. still on the phone, so I edit? wish there would be, yeah. you know. Probably so once this you export them in this small yeah. resolution, you shouldn't edit them on the phone again because that will make a mess out of it. But they improve it more and more. So like for mobiles, almost there's no no loss in energy and energy. In quality. In quality yeah. And in energy. But for, to, to summarize, for you guys, basically what you... Because we've been talking about this almost every night that we've been editing the, the pictures that we took during the day. And um, all of us have different workflows. And basically you have to, you have to find your own workflow that's, that works for you best. And um, Max is using a Lightroom and a phone. Daniel is only using um, Lightroom. And you just have to find, there's, there's plenty of ways to, to get the perfect picture, but you have to find what you like best and what suits your style. And this is basically also um, the tip that we have regarding the equipment, you know. Max started with um, a phone, with a, with a smartphone, and um, then only got a camera. You started with a camera. Yeah, with a DSLR. With a DSLR, and um, you're still working with the DSLR. Yeah. There's um, other roamers that using mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. um, so you basically have to find out what you like best um, and really own the technology and own the tools that you're working with. And then you should be you should be able to, to deliver the content that you want to deliver. And then um, most likely, if you're delivering a really good quality, other people will like it. And that's basically the secret for everything that we are doing. Um, photos and the videos. What I also want to mention, all this is not paid. Um, this is something we're doing simply because so many of you requested to do this. Let us know if you want to know our video setup. We left, this, left our video setup out of this because it would take much too long. If you have any questions, um, leave them in the, in the comment section below. Give this video a like. Yeah, we will answer all the questions in the, in the comment section below if there are any questions left. Um, the Lightroom settings you can obviously uh, check online, buy online. Um, and then, yeah, it's all about you and the hours you put into the work. Because in the end, no one can help you except yourself. Um, mm. It's true. That's a poetic, yeah. poetic ending. Yeah, absolutely. And have patience. And have yeah. patience, yeah, because... Practice a lot. Practice, yeah. practice, 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 practice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is it for today's video. Tomorrow is going to be a, a very exciting day um, because we're going to the Film Fest in Munich. Um, we're meeting many different people. 
um, in Munich and it's going to be a very busy day also with, uh, with an interview with a very interesting company tomorrow. So we want to keep this video short and um, leave you with all the ideas, all the tips and tricks um, that we gave you just now. And we say goodbye from Tegernsee now. Ciao, ciao. Okay.